In this video, I will show you how to record a macro in Microsoft Word. And what is a macro? A macro is a way that you can automate common tasks that you do in Microsoft Word in this case. And you can assign those macros to a keyboard shortcut or to a button. Let's take a look. So here I have a document that I'm working on. And let's say that this is gonna end up being a manual or a book that's got lots of pages. And let's say every so often, I'm gonna want to create section dividers that separate different parts of the text. I could certainly set up those separators and the sections every single time I need to, but why not create a macro to automate some of this for me? And so, for example, here I would like some blank space and a horizontal line separating these two sections. To record the macro to do this, I could simply go here to the View tab and then choose Macros, Record Macro. But if you're gonna use macros quite a bit in your Word documents, you'll probably want to add a new tab into Microsoft Word. The way you do this is by going up here to this button in the Quick Access Toolbar and just choose More Commands. And there's other ways to get to the same place. But here, there's a button that says Customize Ribbon. And these are all the tabs that I currently have activated in Microsoft Word. If I browse down, look, there's a Developer tab. And by default, for most people, it's hidden. So that's why you need to enable it. Click OK. Now I have a Developer tab. So like I said, you can access macros here on the View tab in the Macros group on the ribbon. or just go here to the Developer tab. One reason I like the Developer tab a little better is I do get a few more options just right there ready for me to click and use. Now there are a couple of different ways to create a Word macro. You could click here on Visual Basic and use Visual Basic programming language to create your macro. That's a little bit harder if you're not a programmer. An easier way to do a similar thing is to click here on Record Macro. This makes it as simple as possible to make your macro. So I'll click there and it wants me to name the macro. I'll type in Separator. Just so you know, you can't have any blank spaces in the macro name. So if there's two words, you just push them together with no blank space. Next, do I want the macro assigned to a button or to the keyboard? These are both good options, but in this case, I don't really want a button getting in the way or covering up some of my text. I also don't wanna to have to go find the button. I just wanna use the keyboard. So I'll click here on keyboard, and here I need to set up a new keyboard shortcut key. So for this, I could do Control S, but that's already assigned to be file save, right? What if I did Control C? Well, that's already edit copy. So you might want to avoid some of the common keyboard shortcuts. One way to do that is to combine three keys to make your keyboard shortcut. So like Control, Shift, S. Now that's also already assigned to something else, Style, Apply, Pane, but that's not something I use on a regular basis. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassign this. Next, I need to decide, do I want to save these changes just in this particular Word document or in all future Word documents? By default, in Word, it's gonna save it so that you can use it in all future Word documents. So that's kind of nice that it's the default option. Next, you can go ahead and click Assign and Close. Now, it looks like nothing happened, but what's happening is Microsoft Word is recording everything I do in the document. And if you look at the mouse pointer, it looks like a cassette tape. The reason why is because you could use those old cassette tapes to record things. And that's what's happening. Anything I do with the keys on the keyboard, anything that I choose with the mouse is also being recorded. So I'm just gonna tap enter on the keyboard, let's say twice, and then I want a separator, maybe a horizontal line. So I'm gonna go to the Home tab, and I'll go here to the Paragraph group. I'm gonna click next to the Borders button, and here's a button that gives me a horizontal line. And then I'll tap Enter a couple more times, and that's a nice separator, creating some space between two sections of this manual that I'm working on. So at this point, I'm done recording my macro, but I need to go here to the Developer tab, click Stop Recording. Now, like I said earlier, I could just go to the View tab, Macros, Stop Recording. So that's another way to do it, but you don't get all of the options right there visible for you. So I click Stop Recording, and my macro should be ready to use now. So let's say later in my document, I get to a place where I want a separator put in. I'll just hold Control, hold Shift, and tap S, and look what it does. 
So what a great time saver for me. Instead of six or seven keyboard presses and instead of going up and finding the exact option that I want to put in with the mouse, all I have to do is control shift S for my separator. Let's look at another option. Let's say that I find myself often having to put in my name and contact information into my documents. Why not turn that also into a macro? So I'll go here to developer, record macro, and I'll call this contact info, no spaces. I want it to be a keyboard shortcut, and I'm gonna use control shift C for contact. That's what that's gonna stand for. I want it to save in normal so that I can use this time after time. As long as I'm using Word on this computer, it should work for me. I click assign, close. Now it's recording everything I do. So I put in a name, tap enter on the keyboard or return. But let's say instead of having this space between the two lines as normally happens in Microsoft Word, what if I want it to be immediately below? I'll just hold shift and tap enter on the keyboard. That puts it immediately below. Type in the position. Again, shift enter. I can put in the address. Again, shift enter. And I could put in email and phone number as well if I want. And then I'll just go up and click stop recording. Let's try out the new macro. I'm going to delete all this. And let's say at the bottom of this document, I want to put in the contact info. Control shift C. And there it is. Maybe later on in a different part of the document, I want it again. Control shift C. And there it is again. Now those are just two examples of macros that you could create in Microsoft Word. There are many other powerful macros you could create just only limited by your creativity for how you want to simplify creating your documents. You can also look online for some ideas for Word macros that you could record. One last thing to be aware of, with the Developer tab selected, you'll notice that we have an option here for macro security. When you use macros in a document, by default, the next time you open it up or somebody else opens up the document, the macro is disabled, but you get a notification saying that it's disabled and you can click the button to enable the macros. If you prefer, you could just disable all macros and not notify anyone and they would have to be manually enabled. Or you could disable all macros except for digitally signed macros or you could enable all macros. Not recommended, as you can see, because it is possible for someone to create a malicious macro that could erase your data on your spreadsheet and things like that. So let's say you open a Word document that you find online and there's a macro attached to it. Do you really want that to be automatically enabled? You don't know what the person put into the macro. Maybe it just deletes stuff or things like that. So you'll have to be careful with this last option. For me, I almost always leave it here, disable all macros, but give a notification so I can re-enable it. And we have some other options as well. I'll click OK. If you want a list of all of your macros, all you have to do is click here macros it lists the macros that you have put in place if you want to get rid of any of these you can just select them and delete them if you click edit it takes you into the visual basic programming interface and that may be intimidating for many people you can also go here to organizer to get more information about your macros and make some changes you can rename some things so check that out if you want to learn more and if there's a lot of interest in this video i'd be happy to show all of the ins and outs of this organizer and how it can help you so i hope you'll give macros in microsoft word a try there's a lot you can do with them and i hope you've enjoyed watching this video if you have please like follow and subscribe and when you do click the bell so you'll be notified when i post another video if you'd like to support my channel consider clicking the thanks button below the video you can also support me through my patreon account or by buying channel merch and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.